So in this video, we are going to study about biodiversity and what it is all about. So we are going to start off with its definition and its uh, upper form or whatever we have uh, or whatever we know about it before moving into its complexities. So biodiversity is the totality of genes, species and ecosystem in a region. And there are some levels of biodiversity such as genetic diversity, so which is a genetic variation among individuals within a species. It arises due to different chromosome structures or alleles. Uh, it is also due to adaptation to particular environmental conditions which may weed out genetic variations that are not successful and it avoids inbreeding or disease epidemics. So basically it's a mix of certain genes, species and ecosystem in a region. All right. As you can see in the picture as given, so it's an ecosystem diversity. This is a species diversity. This is a genetic diversity. All right. So it's biodiversity is the totality or the sum total of all of these. All right. And it arises due to different chromosome structures and genes or alleles. And it is also due to adaptations of particular different environment, which can be cold or very hot or some sort of different environment they survive in. And it avoids inbreeding or disease in epidemic. All right. So it's a very positive point that avoids inbreeding or disease epidemics. All right. So moving on with this. So the second uh, reason to that is species diversity, which it can be variety of species living within a geographic region. So basically uh, there can be different sort of species or different sort of genes or different sort of combination of uh, species or genes that may live in a particular region. And there are three ways to categorize species diversity in a given area, which can be alpha diversity, beta diversity or gamma diversity. So alpha diversity is within habitat, beta diversity is between habitat and gamma diversity is the total biodiversity within a landscape. So gamma is just a sum total of all of these, whereas alpha diversity is within a particular habitat and beta diversity is between habitats. All right and species richness. So what is species richness is given by the number of total species present in a given geographical area. All right. And endangered species, as we know, are the species which are on the verge of extinction. Also, the third reason of biodiversity is the ecosystem diversity. So we have just uh, seen the three pictures of uh, biodiversity. All right. So we have moving to the third uh, diversity, which is the ecosystem diversity which is the diversity above species level. So it does not, it is just, uh, it is just not restricted to species level, but it is, but includes more other organisms in it as well. So it deals with diversity in community, habitat and landscape. Also it involves species distribution, role, function and their interactions. Also every ecosystem differs in a, a biotic features such as physical structure, temperature, water, food type and biotic features such as species composition. All right. So this is a highest level of biodiversity that we see here. So moving on with this. So talk about the hotspots under biodiversity. So what is a hotspot? So it's a region rich in biodiversity with a very high level of endemic species. So there are a lot of species that imbibe in a particular region in a particular environment, which is known as hotspots. So hotspot regions have at least 1500 endemic species of vascular plants and its conservation international identified nearly 25 hotspots are around the globe, which cover around 2.3 Earth's surface. So that is a that is somewhat a big uh, uh, percentage as we can uh, see. And their majority are the forest areas and most are located in the tropical and temperate regions. And about 10% of the original area world's diversity hotspot is currently protected as parks or reserves. So definitely parks and reserves are hotspots because we see a different variety of lots of species, animals and insects and different sort of variety of organisms. All right. So uh, so these are some of the hotspots that we went through in a biodiversity. So as you can see, this is a map of the whole world, a world map uh, where hotspots are marked. 
So as you can see in the different countries, you can see the hotspots such as in the America, we have this. In upper part, we have this. Under Madagascar, we have we have in Australia, we have Southern Australia, Western Australia. And on the Caribbean islands, we have Caribbean here and lots of things. You can just uh, take a screenshot or just pause the video and watch it. All right. So there are lots of hotspots in the world where these organisms are present as whole in a particular geographic region. So talking about hotspot regions in India. So uh, there can be Thar Desert, there are Western Ghats, there are Himalayas, then Sundarbans. Uh, so in Thar Desert, so it's a desert as you can see. So the climatic and vegetatic regions in this area is a contrast to Himalayan regions. So it's very opposite to the weather that is found in Himalayas. And these have a dry region, all right. So as it's a desert. And Western Ghats are one of the major biodiversity hotspots in India. So these cover this part of this align the uh, western coast or western coastal part of India. Where uh, next we have Sundarvans which are present in the state of West Bengal as you can see. The edge of West Bengal and it's the largest mangrove forest in India. So as you also it's a huge hotspot as you can see a number of organisms present here. And it has a record of uh, something uh, we known as uh, it has the highest tiger population here in India. And also next up we have the Himalayas which is the most popular hotspot that we can see here that lines the upper part of India. So it's the majestic range of mountains and is the home of diverse range of flora and fauna. And Eastern Himalayas is one of the two biodiversity hotspot in India. So I'm going to this. So talk about the ecological crisis. So we talked about the biological diversities and how they are related to each other and what are the terms that comes under biodiversity. So let's just move from there and talk about some ecological crisis that we face day to day and our day to day life. So main factors of ecological crisis are overpopulation, which causes rapid depletion of resources. We have environmental pollution, which leads to climatic change, which are we have deforestations and urbanization, which are natural habitat and biodiversity loss. We have over harvesting which causes poaching, species extinction. We have invasive species, which causes accidental introduction of exotic species that become a serious threat to native biota. So as you can see here, we have some of the invasive species. Uh, uh, we have some of the fishes, we have some of the toads or reptiles that are native to North America, Eastern North America. And these are placed in, uh, these are placed in Africa, Asia, Europe, Australia, which are comparatively very hot to where they actually live. So some of the effects that these organisms face are uh, these are introduced to uh, they are introduced to control mosquito population. The mosquito fish outcome out competes native fishes, eats the eggs and does no better than native species in controlling mosquitoes. Also talking about toads, the bullfrog is contributing to amphibian and reptiles declines in Western North Africa, America and bullfrog tadpoles grow large and can outcompete and prey on other tadpoles but need to grow a long time in permanent water to do so. So historically most water bodies in arid Western dried up part of the year make it possible for bullfrogs to live there but artificial impoundments such as dams canals give the frogs bases from where they could spread. So these are some of the invasive species, as you can see, which causes ecological crisis. And some of the effects of ecological crisis are greenhouse effect, global warming, climatic change, ozone depletion and natural disasters, which are long term and causes significant weather change. Also, that uh, next point that we have here is the loss of biodiversity. So loss of biodiversity causes habitat loss, which results in species extinction. Right. So there are two some uh, big factors that uh, largely counts it are the greenhouse effect, global warming, loss of biodiversity and some of the climate change due to ozone depletion. So, so how do we control them and which is which we known as the ecological management or how do we control these sort of crisis? 
So it aims to conserve major ecological services and restore natural resources while meeting the socio-economic, political and cultural needs of current and future generation. The main objectives of ecosystem management is the efficient maintenance and ethical use of natural resources. So some of the approaches that we can adapt or we have adapted in some of the cities and some of the countries as well, which can be adaptive management, natural source management, strategic management, command and control management. So these can be in every sphere. So these need to be incorporated for solving the ecological crisis. So some of the uh, commands or management that I just said now are listed here, as you can see. So under adaptive management, which is a structured iterative process of robust decision making in the face of uncertainty with the aim to reduce uncertainty over time via system monitoring. So adaptive management is very important as you can see. So we have natural resource management and strategic management. So I'll just read about strategic management, which encourages, encourages the establishment of goals that will benefit the ecosystem while keeping the socio-economic and political relevant issues in mind. And strategic uh, management differs from other types of ecosystem management because it keeps stakeholders involved and relies on their input to develop the best management strategy for an ecosystem. And talking about the command and control, so command and control is very easy, but it's difficult to operate. So command and control management utilizes a linear problem solving approach where a perceived problem is solved through controlling devices such as laws, threats, and contracts or agreements. So these are some of the five conceptual or management techniques that can be incorporated to solve the ecological crisis. So some of the impacts of under this we have is the uh, ecological impact assessment about the environmental impact assessment, which is a process which ensures that all environmental matters are taken into account quite early in the project at planning process itself. So EIA or environmental impact assessment is one of the successful policies of the 20th century for environmental conservation. And in 18, uh, 1989, the World's Bank adopted EIA for major development project. Also, it has three core values, as you can see, which is integrity, utility, utility and sustainability. So this was just for informative reasons. Uh, this is something that uh, might not come in your exams as well. But this is such something for information. So let's just keep this video till here. I'll be back with another video very soon. So stay tuned and thank you for watching this video.